All right, everyone, welcome to Brilliant Directories Webinar Wednesday. This is actually Webinar Wednesday number 22. I want to say hi to everyone out there, Blair and Chris. Thanks for joining us. Barb as well, nice to see you. Got two Barbers on the line here. So on the line with us today is myself, Jason, one of the co-founders here at Brilliant Directories. And this week, we're very lucky to have Patrick Burnell with us on the line. All right, great to be here, Jason. I uh, definitely missed Webinar Wednesdays, and I'm really looking forward to today, and in particular, some of the news uh, you have to share here at the at the beginning of the webinar. Awesome. We also have Gabriel on the line with us. He'll be uh, behind the scenes there, answering your questions through the GoToWebinar uh, chatting, giving us a helping hand here, and we always appreciate uh, when Gabe is on the line here with us. And for those of you who have not yet joined our LinkedIn marketing group, it's always free. Uh, any questions we don't cover in the webinar here today, we can continue the discussions and the conversations in our free LinkedIn group. You can go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash LinkedIn. And uh, as long as you're logged into your LinkedIn account, you can just click the join button and you can start uh, asking more questions. Um, and you'll get responses not only from myself, but fellow directory owners about marketing strategy uh, and ways to set up your site to uh, convert more members and visitors and the such. So hopefully you can join our LinkedIn group. Just go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash LinkedIn. And again, for those of you joining us for the first time, uh, the goal of Webinar Wednesdays is really to serve you, to help you with your websites, there's always times where people have more questions. The software is very robust. They're looking to push their website to the next level. You might be stuck on something. You want to throw your laptop against the wall. Before you do that, you can always email our support team, and we'll always be having Webinar Wednesday for you guys where you can get free live support from myself, Patrick, and Gabe. Uh, so the type of questions that you guys can ask, anything related to designing your site if you're trying to set things up, marketing your site, uh, publishing content. What other types of things, Pat, do you think to kind of expand on what's written here, types of questions people can ask in Webinar Wednesdays? Well, yeah, and I was also thinking if uh, anybody wants to share, maybe we've never really done this before, but if anybody wants to share something that they've done recently that's helped them with their marketing, that they don't always have to ask questions. We are a team here. We're our, we are one big community all trying to help one another so when you're asking your question if you've done a marketing campaign or if you found a good a good way to get the word out to members or to end users or anything that might be helpful to other people I uh, definitely would love to hear uh, what you guys are using as well because Jason and myself can bring things that we're seeing but if we multiply our resources and our knowledge uh, we're bound to all learn some pretty amazing stuff here during these webinars as well so um, I, I did want to bring that up uh, at some point today yeah, if you guys have suggestions that can help others, that this is the perfect platform to, to kind of share your experiences. Good, good idea there. All right, um, we have some new releases that we want to share with you. We're, we launch things weekly. Uh, so a lot of them are behind the scenes, security and stability and patches and things like that, uh, that, that come from your inquiries to us. Uh, but there are a few that uh, Pat and I would like to share with you, one of them being something called a deep keyword search. And we can kind of show you exactly what deep keyword search does, as well as webs the website address field in for your forms will now create an active link. We'll show you that. And we have a new transactions history manager that we'll be releasing uh, probably in the next week or two. It's gonna give you a lot more control over the payments on your site. And my favorite, give you control over seeing your past due payments. Sometimes people's credit cards are not valid anymore or a payment skips. There is a way to see that in the admin soon and you'll be able to take a proactive uh, approach to responding to those as well as a new way to import members with their profile photos if you have photos with their members. So I'll, I'll explain deep keyword search uh, real quick. So Many of you have the keyword search on on your websites and before the keyword search would only search essentially the member's name or the category they were a part of. It would not search any other information that was part of their profile. For example, in this example members uh, about section, 
uh, we've written, let's have a look to see if deep keyword search works. Uh, so deep keyword search is on here, and I will type in the word deep, uh, because deep is listed here in his about section, and we should see a result for the keyword deep. Well, actually we don't, because Patrick just turned it off a moment ago. Let me turn it on now. This is actually a good example. So I'll turn the deep keyword search on, and I'll also show you guys where you can do that. You want to go to your settings, advanced settings, and you can search for the word deep. You'll see this one here, deep, deep keyword search. Zero means off. Just set it to one, and I'll let this save. And I still have the same URL here, and I'll do a, a refresh of this page. Looks like it's just finished saving. Let me refresh it again. And now we see Philip Stark's uh, profile here because somewhere in his data or information is the word deep. So this can work for his name, um, any custom variables that you add. So maybe you want to add somebody's favorite color. Uh, so it would also search uh, any custom variables that you add to their listing um, as well. Uh, let's search the word transfer in the keyword now. And we still see uh, Philip Stark's name. So I know uh, Jeff uh, in the last webinar two weeks ago from Australia, he wanted a way to, from, to allow members to enter keywords for their listings. So you could have a field where members enter keywords for their listings. Maybe you limit it to 100 characters so they don't over abuse it. But now you can have your members found uh, with the keyword search beyond the category, their name, and their company. So for a lot of websites, this is a, a game changer. This is a free feature. It is available in your advanced settings now. Just search deep keyword search to one. One thing to consider, though, um, it doesn't give any priority to where the keyword is. If it's in their name or the about section, it will just list the member results based on the, the member uh, priority levels that are set for that product. Uh, so deep keyword search is live, and that's a really big game changer. Um, the next thing are the linkable website address fields. And let me show you guys uh, what that one is. Let's go back to Philip Stark's profile. So we've covered this in a couple webinars where someone wanted their members to add uh, some more website um, link fields. Uh, for example, in this case, we've added a website link field here, and the problem was the, the link would not be linkable. It would just put the link as plain text, just like these. So the update is, is this, and I'll show you guys right now. Let me go to your toolbox and your form manager. So if you were going to add a field where your members can enter a link for something besides Facebook, maybe it's their open table or TripAdvisor or whatever it is, um, you just you, you would just create a new field. And let me show you guys here. I'm in the form manager. We're going to edit, for example, the listing details field. And... This is where your members would put their hours of operation, accepted forms of payment, credentials. You can always add more. Um, and then if you set the field to website address, it's right there. It's close to the bottom of the standard form field options, website address. When the member inputs a URL, and it's also going to check that it is a valid URL, they're putting HTTP, you know, www, all that good stuff. Uh, then the link will be clickable on their listing page. So you do, before you would have to go in and edit the widget and do some custom things, but now it will naturally make the field clickable. So again, this is another game changer uh, for anyone adding new types of web links your members can add uh, to their profile pages. And another good thing is uh, when you click on these links, they will open in a new tab. So they'll still be on your website here. And the biggest thing to share, which should be launching hopefully this week or next week, is the new Transactions History uh, Manager. And let me go here. Let me show you guys what it looks like right now. You guys that, are, that have transactions on your websites, 
um, well, this site doesn't have a lot, but you're kind of used to seeing something that looks like this. You're very limited in your options, just refund or stop. The new transactions history page, uh, this is the view here. And I'll tell you one of the most important things that, that this includes is it lets you know how much past due revenue you have, money that was unable to be collected, but it was scheduled to be collected, again, due to maybe the credit card is not valid and, and, and whatnot. Uh, you'll first have a tab here that says payments received. So this is basically, it shows you a timeline of all your payments received. You can also search uh, based on date range. So if you want to see all the payments uh, from one day, I'll do the 8th as an example. We should see this one person here. Perfect. We see one person here. So now you have some search capability uh, within your transactions. Another cool thing that we've added is the upcoming payments tab. These are payments that are coming up within the next 14 days. So you can see what's coming up in the next 14 days. Um, and there are some really cool options here on the side. You can cancel an individual payment. Maybe you're giving someone a free month. You can also stop all payments. That will stop any recurring payments associated with that product uh, for that member. Uh, even better is you can download an invoice here. So you can download the invoice and then send it to the member upon their request if they need an invoice. And obviously my favorite, with one click, you can create a new order for that member. So you get a lot of control just in this actions area here. Here's the one that's going to help you recoup and save a lot of money with your directory. It's the past due tab. And so on this side is just we have some example data in here. There's 36 members that are past due. And what's really neat with the past due is um, there is an option to collect past due. So you can attempt to collect the past due payment. And maybe the credit card wasn't, wasn't valid or working or past its limit on the day that the system was trying to bill it. So you can always attempt to collect the past due payment. If it's not available, you can enter the credit card information. So maybe you call the person, they give you a new credit card over the phone, um, and then you can just enter it here and the person will have a new credit card on file. So it's really a complete all-in-one management area here. We also have a tab that simply shows any refunded payments. So you can see a history of refunds. This site doesn't have any refunds and also any canceled payments. This site doesn't have any canceled payments. Here is the fun part. There is something called an income forecast. And what this tab is going to do is it's going to show you how much money you're expected to make month after month after month. So if you scroll down here, this chart, this chart is cumulative, which means, which means it's adding the previous month and showing you your forecast of how much you'd make towards the end of the year. So you can just hover over here and it'll tell you how much you're expected uh, to generate. If you scroll down, it gives you a month by month breakdown of how many monthly recurring subscriptions you have, quarterly, semi-annually. Most of you just have annual and monthly, uh, but it shows you how much revenue you're projected to uh, generate uh, in the coming months if everything stays the same. I love this because it's super motivational. It makes me want to work on my website more. I can actually see the numbers and actually see the value of my investment and hard work that I've put into my website. Uh, so you'll have this awesome income forecast tab along with all the other tabs here uh, to manage your payments. Any other, anything you want to add to that, uh, Pat, regarding this? No, you... Uh... You covered that beautifully. I couldn't be more excited with an update than that one. It's a game changer with anyone with an active business. Agreed, agreed. All right, let's see if there's any other updates. Uh, there is one to up import member profile photos. I'll just uh, talk about this one. A lot of people are importing business data and they have um, the photo available. So now you can import not only their name and phone number, but you can actually put the file name of, of their old profile photo, and then our system will add that profile photo to their Brilliant Directories listing, or the listing on your website, excuse me. Uh, so that's a real game changer because not only can you import the data, but now you can import uh, the photos that accompany each member or business. All right, we have uh, recommended reading this week, and 
this is Pat's recommendation. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and pass it to you, Pat. All right, I'll cross my fingers for a good audio connection, but the book that I'm recommending is Good to Great. This is great for any business owner, definitely tailored to the owner, not necessarily employee. So if you're uh, starting up an online business, it's definitely intended for you. And it's a study to identify what differentiates the good businesses from the great businesses, which he analyzes the, the top performing uh, businesses in the world. And he, he has some great revelations in terms of what it is that does make them great. Uh, I really like chapters three and four in particular where he focuses on who you bring into your team uh, being a lot more important than what direction you're going to want to go to, as well as being able to confront the brutal facts, meaning uh, uh, being honest with yourself and identifying if a trend's not going the right way, to not being stubborn, to being flexible to change, and, and all that good stuff. So I highly recommend uh, this read. It's very quick, and, uh, and you'll learn a great deal. Awesome. Thanks for that uh, recommendation. Previous books uh, we recommended, Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, the story of how uh, Phil Knight created Nike. It's a fun read. And also Rework uh, kind of shows you how to stop getting in, in the way of your own business and how to kind of simplify things for yourself rather than complicate. So we've had three uh, reading recommendations. Good to Great is this webinar. Previous one was Rework and then Shoe Dog. So hopefully you guys can uh, catch up on some of that reading. All right, we have a very special deal of the week. Uh, most everyone now is on the VIP add-ons club and we'll be adding more add-ons uh, very soon. If you are not part of the add-ons club, this is the last chance to get it at our older pricing uh, because we've added um, new add-ons over the last couple months. The, pr the price of the add-ons club has more inherent value. It's $110 per month to join the add-ons club now. The previous price was $95. The deal of the week is to get it for the older $95 price plus 50% off. The promo code is FINAL50 and you can go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash final 50 that will make the price $47.50 per month for life. Uh, so if you want to enhance your site, I'll just show you some of the add-ons that we have now. This will add an SSL to your site, our newest add-on, auto recurring events. That's actually something we should have mentioned in, in the new releases. Auto recurring events are now part of uh, the add-ons club and, and it's an add-on that we offer now. So this is really good for fitness classes or things that recur weekly. You don't have to manually post the events. Just take advantage of the auto recurring events. Uh, the automatic lead matching, if your site is generating leads from consumers uh, that want to contact your members, the auto lead matching does the heavy lifting for you and again helps you generate uh, more revenue. Uh, the list goes on here, but as an add-ons club member, you get access not only to these add-ons that are available, uh, but we have a myriad of other add-ons that are coming soon, and you'll always keep that same price for life. So for $47.50 per month, it's a super value uh, that you can add to your website business. And again, this will be the last time we'll be offering it at the $95 price with a discount. Moving forward, it will be $110. So we hope those of you who are not members yet can take advantage uh, of the savings here and because you're joining us on the webinar. All right. Now is the fun part. We're here to answer your questions. All right. Uh, Van, I've unmuted your microphone. Are you with us, Van? Yeah. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. How are you doing today? Can you hear me? Uh, good. Good. Appreciate it, guys. Where are you calling um, in from? Real quick. I'm in North Carolina. Okay, good, good. Uh, what's your question for us today? Um, earlier you were talking about the new features with the payments, um, and there was an, a feature there where you could select stop all payments. Yes. Um, yeah. And my question is, when you select stop all payments, does that send um, does that send a cancel order to, like I'm using Stripe, for my payment processor, would that send the order to Stripe or do I still need to go into my Stripe account and cancel that so recurring payment? 
That's a really good question. Um, Brilliant Directories um, is, integ is integrated with Stripe. You do that from the finance section when you connect your payment gateways. So the Brilliant Directories platform will automatically stop that for you. There's no, re no need to go into a, your gateway, whether it be PayPal or Authorize.net or Stripe or eWay, uh, to manually stop, stop the payment. This will stop all future payments from processing. Perfect. That's great. Thanks. That's my question. All right. Good stuff. Yeah, really excited about that. Uh, this update here. It's going to give everyone a 360 degree uh, view of what's going on with their payments. With uh, with the stop all payment, Jason, does that stop all payments for that particular product for that member, or all products for that member? That's also a good question. It's just that product for the member. So, if for example, if we're looking here at the pro membership, uh, this would just stop. The pro membership. So if you have, if you're selling multiple products to your members uh, for different types of services, the stop all payments is only related to that one product for that one member. We have a written in question. Um, it's for the best of dot golf, and his question is if he has too much on his homepage, he'd like to get our feedback on this. I think it's a question that people ask quite a bit. Um, and kind of the best practice when it comes to that. Sure. So uh, here we are on the website. And let's start with uh, the logo. The best of dog golf kind of makes sense. The number one website directory for golfers. Um, I might want to know website directory of what for golfers. So that you might want to change your slogan or come up with something that kind of lets you know exactly in what capacity this is a directory for golfers. Uh, the best of golf all in one place. So the, it's, it's kind of redundant here You've because you're already mentioning this in your logo. What, what was the name, David, you said, Pat, or person's name? Um, let me check here. Let me okay. check. I'm sorry. I should have. That's okay. So know it's a little redundant that you have the best of Val. golf. Val. Okay. I think we were trying to unmute his mic. Uh, Val. Okay. Val. Uh, you might want to tell people an action here. Uh, let me just do a quick thing here. What you might want to say is, and let's see what your categories are here. Uh, find a golf pro, I, I, find tee times. Yeah, Pat? I actually think this is the perfect type of website to have like an, an interior design demo that we created with two clear call to actions. What's the content that golfers would be most interested to find and really focus on those two types of contents and drive people there. I know he has a lot of content on his website, but that may also be a good option rather than just going straight to the to member search, so to speak. Right. So you can, you're can you right, actually. You're searching everything from a, a golf pro to equipment, golf for women, golf lessons, golf news. So it's really this is an all-in-one golf. If I was coming to this website, I really wouldn't know why I would want to use this website. So it might be – that might be – a good idea and what the, the links could be. So what, what Patrick is recommending is instead of using a search on the home page, you could start the page with two buttons. And what you could say instead is, you know, find everything for golf and then I guess this would be like list your golf services, right? And then you can put a little thing there. So you could have two buttons, uh, find everything for golf. And what you could do is instead of what, instead of just taking them to the search results page, what you could do, and this would be nice if you have your categories page. So he's got this page for categories golf professionals by category. Now people can come here and they can see what, what they want to look for. And this also includes the subcategories. Um, so obviously not all of these top level categories have sub-level categories, but this might create a better user experience, find everything for golf, list your golf services um, when you're first coming to the site. Now, the search isn't bad, but what I would recommend for Val is if he was going to keep the search, um, I, I would change what it says here to something like search everything you need 
to improve, right? We got to show benefit there. Let's improve your golfing skills. And uh, let me just make this a little bigger. Now the site's talking to me. Search everything you need to improve your golfing skills or golf skills, if you want to say just golf skills. And then it says, uh, what do you need? And then you can search. Now the site makes sense to me. We haven't even scrolled down. Golf for seniors, golf for winners. So, so my recommendation for Val would first be change this title to search everything you need to improve your golfing skills. Now this is talking... Mm -hmm. It's talking to the website visitor. It's telling them a benefit for using this site. It's not just saying what the site is over and over again. We get it's the best of golf, but again, in what capacity? Who who is this the best of golf for? Um, so um, and and just to, and just to add to that, and, and and it looks like he is just getting started, and it's a new it's a new online business he's going to launch. He's going to start promoting. Uh, I always like to tell uh, to recommend simplifying the message. The quicker it is for me to understand what it is the website's for, the easier it is for me to use it, and the better chance there is I come back to it. So it's just about doing an honest audit about what type of content would actually engage a golfer. I play golf myself, so off the top of my head, I would love to read reviews left by other people that have golfed at courses. That's an amazing feature. It's out of the box of brilliant directories. A call to action could be to read reviews on, on golf courses or in your area. Another one is to have local deals. I know that uh, a lot of golf courses have deals oh, on man. tee times, and yeah. that's a great that if you if you focus on the deal content now people are actually engaged and maybe the third one would be find a coach uh, and, and those would be the three call to actions that you just introduce people to at the, right there with the three buttons that take people to the proper sections of the site and then you can have additional content that they can find through the main menu but simplifying the initial experience on the home page and if you scroll down Jason there's just so much streaming information it's hard to wrap your head around it especially if it's the wow. first time you've ever wow. come to the website wow. so simplify wow. simplify simplify wow wow I mean you see a lot of pictures of people golfing but it kind of gets lost after a while because you know, this guy's smiling and there's a flag here and they're all golf rate related pictures, but I would get lost in this. I think, so there's a few things I have, a few ideas, ideas I have for everyone watching. You can obviously see, I mean, I see how clear just the simple title change is compared to this mm -hmm. title, just that. So what I recommend everyone to do, and we cover this exact thing in one of our premium webinars. Let me go to the free workshop videos. Okay, this is only for VIP add-on clubs member, which is the deal of the week this week. So if you're an add-ons club member, you have access to these videos. And again, if you're, you're serious about your business and your success depends on if you have this title on your page or this title on your page, or before you start investing a million dollars in Google advertising, just watch these videos. So you wanna go to premium workshop videos and Val, you wanna watch for, these two here, the bottom two, eight ways to attract and, and profit from website visitors and creating awesome content. They specifically cover how to um, put text on your homepage that's going to connect with your uh, visitor. The second thing I recommend, and again, it's hard to kind of you know share these things in, in the webinar because there's so many things to go over. Um, what I would recommend is Patrick does do um, what's called a website audit review. So let's say you've set up your membership levels. Everything looks like it's perfect on your site, the categories, but people aren't using your site. It's probably because things aren't organized nicely for the website visitor. In the website audit review, we don't only go, we'll, we'll review your site with you for a full hour and we'll review your pricing page. All the fundamental things we'll make sure are set up correctly, but we will also recommend, especially if you get this call with Patrick, uh, so, let me see here. Here's the advanced website audit review. Um, so this is this will be a review with Patrick. It's $950. It sounds like a lot. Um, you can use um, uh, the time to talk about the marketing aspect of your site and how you want to set up your site to convert visitors, not just making sure the fundamental things are set up 
correctly. So with this call with Patrick, it is $950. It's for an hour. But if you're going to start investing serious money into marketing your business, it's probably going to be the best hour you spent on your website because it's going to turn just starting with the message, your, your main message into something that's going to actually um, um, resonate with your website visitors. Um, so that's all yeah, the three, the, th the three goals, the three goals I have on those is always to make sure that the homepage is optimized for, for new visitors to be easy to use that the, that the landing page to get members and users to sign up is set up and optimized as well. So it's not using the traditional three menu pricing page as well as making sure uh, you have a mechanism in place to capture leads. If leads is in fact uh, one of the, th one of the goals of the website to generate for your members and making sure you have a good strategy developed for that. So those are usually the, the top three topics that we'll focus on and, and make sure at the end of that audit that you're set up for all three. Cool. Yeah. I see a lot of people cancel their ideas a lot just cause they didn't see any traction. And one, one of those, and they've had that idea for like five years, they finally give it a shot. And then, you know, after like two months of not seeing anything happen, they just give up on their idea when all they had to do was change a little bit of the text on their site, you know, make it a little more relatable for their visitors. So, um, you know, we hate to see people give up on their ideas, especially when the fixes are, are so simple. All right. Good question there from Val and a good way to look at your website with fresh eyes. All right, we got William on the line here. How you doing, William? Doing great. Awesome. Uh, Where are you calling in from, William? Los Angeles. Okay, I'm in LA as well. Um, any any good tips you got on the webinar here today? Any anything uh, I, worthwhile? Also, yes, and also on the uh, website review that I had with Franchella, she was excellent. Uh, I just wondering if you could look at my site and uh, do with the same thing that you did with the golf site. Just, you know, get another set of buys on it. Absolutely. Uh, what's the name of your site? Findbestbid.com. All right. Let's check it out for you, William. Thank you. Yeah. All right. How long have you had this site with us? Uh, approximately a month. Okay. Okay. Okay, so find best bid. So you're using our uh, lead form on your homepage. So uh, you're generating leads here. And why don't you tell us a little bit about what the, in one one or two sentences, what the purpose of this site is for? Um, to plan your occasion and then get bids. I, if you scroll down, you'll see my categories. And there's like, if someone wants to uh, get bids on a limo, a magician, you know, for a party or special occasions. Okay, so it's a, it's a site to find uh, event services and event vendors. I see bands, I see clowns, limos. Okay, and let's see here. And you want to get the best, well, you have a really good name, Find Best Bid. That's actually very universal. Um, even it, it uh, transcends just uh, for events and occasions, but it's good to focus on, on one thing first. Um, the number one website to play. I think the, it, the and I hate I hate to go back to it, but if you if you showed him the interior design demo, my, my biggest concern with the lead form right on the um, right on the actual uh, homepage is that there's not there's no explaining what's going to happen next if I fill out that form. So the interior design demo we had customized the get match page, Jason, which I think a call to action going to the page that explains the whole bidding process. You get a lot more conversions um, than you would just having the form right on the home page. Um, that would have, to, but you'd have to show them the landing page that I'm referring to on interior design demo. Got you. That's also a good I've seen that Patrick, and, and I really like that setup. And I agree, there's a lot more. It's that's more intuitive for the user. You've got two choices: whether you're a professional or if you're a visitor to a site looking for bids or quotes. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm showing an example now, movingquotepros.com. This is also using the lead form, um, similar to what you have here. But let's look at the difference. Because this site is very clear, it's really just for one thing. There aren't any categories. Moving Quote Pros, it just says get free instant moving quotes now. So the user automatically knows what the website is for. Um, and it says, where are you moving from? You can say Los Angeles. So this would be a good application for the lead form. Let me show you another example uh, where I think the lead, 
the lead form is good to have on the home page. Um, here's another one, Loan Broker Pros. And again, just another example, get match now and get instant loan quotes. So it's very clear what you're going to get and why you're filling out this form. So if, mm -hmm. you, if you want, William, we can put the let's if you want we can do this uh the two buttons on your homepage for you right now would you like us to do that sure thank you very much all right let me uh take the code here and uh, i'll pop this code here this the code for this is in our support center to make these two buttons but i am going to put it in the chat here and it's a little bit of complicated code there so what we're going to do is we're going to go to your design settings and first we'll put the two buttons and then uh, we'll talk about your images back here. That'll be a second thing. So what we want to do is go to design settings, homepage layout, and then the homepage search settings. And we have a search type here. You're using the lead form. There's tons of searches here. You obviously just want to have one. You don't want to overwhelm your user. And we're going to do uh, the hero message with links. And I'm going to put the code in here. And for now, we'll just uh, we'll send them to the Get Matched page here. And then the other one will be Join. And what should the button say, Pat? What do you think the one for the consumers should say? The uh, interior design has Get Free Quotes or something like that, correct? How about Find Deals for Your Event or Get Bids for Your Event? Get bids for your event. That's that's what you're getting, right? Correct. And then we'll do list your event services. We'll just keep it. Let's just see what that looks like for now. And if you don't mind, can I turn off the slideshow? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then let me search for another image here for you. Um, Let's do this. Now, you want to make sure you get photos from stock photo websites. Um, so you got so it's you know you have the royalties and the license the proper licenses. So I'm just going to do this uh, temporarily. Um, let me just search for a wedding on the beach. Just a moment. Okay, why not? Um, again, you can change this up. I'm just going to crop this real quick in Photoshop. And I would recommend finding another image, but I just want to kind of show you how this changes the tone of your website a bit. Now, your site is a good candidate to have some, some of the categories on, on the home page underneath it because you have some key uh, categories that people can search. It could be entertainers. It can be clowns. It can be flower people. Um, you know, that I, kind of. I believe stuff. I do have a category widget on there. Okay, good. So let's let's see how that ties in to this. So what I'm going to do now is upload. I turned off your slideshow, and I'm going to replace your image here. And then we're going to put a nice title on your homepage that really uh, tells the person what they can they can do on your on your website. Now that we have those two links. Okay, and here's here's a fun thing is when you upload images, I like to sort by the date, and then I get the one I just uploaded there. Uh, and let me do a center on this instead of right. All right, let's just see what that looks like before we do anything else. Okay, and just let that save. All right, so let's refresh the home page. I did a hard refresh. It's just taking a minute. Okay, we can make this a little bit bigger. It's not a problem. Um, let's increase the width of uh, the columns to uh, 10. And we could be getting, we could have a better background image here, obviously. Let me uh, do one more thing on the padding. We can put a larger padding on the top and the bottom. 
which will let you see more of that picture. I, I do think we can get, obviously, a much a better picture here. And then, Pat, what do you think the main title should be here? Right now it says get instant bids from professionals near you. What's a better way to motivate users to want to use this? I like to for people to recognize the first thing we need to do is for the, to, for them to identify that they are the person that should be on this site. So planning an event, looking for planners, uh, so that they say yes. The more yes that they can say leading to your call to action, the longer they're going to stay on your website. So it's really important that they identify. Now I instantly know, yes, I am planning an event, or yes, I am planning for a special occasion. So I will keep reading. What else do they say? And as and then as they keep identifying the sites for them, then their confident level goes goes up that they should ask for bids for their particular uh, special occasion because that site is tailored tailor made for them. Okay. So what I did is I said planning an event as the main text and then the subtitle get instant bids from event professionals near you. And I changed the size a little bit. Let's see what this looks like. Whoa. Let's, I think we can get rid of the word event here. I think it's a little redundant just from professionals mm -hmm. near you. And do you, is this good? Are we looking good with this planning an event? And I'm just going to give you a, uh, a little more space up there. Oh, I see what's going on. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Let's save this. I actually wish we had a before and after. <laughs> All right, this is loading. All right, so planning an event, get instant bids from professionals near you, and then get bids for your event, list your event services. So now you have two options here. And for right now, this is going to take you to the Get Match page, not the nice one that we have on the, uh, the interior design demo site. Let's, sh let's show everyone what that one looks like. It is under the, where was that, Pat? Get free quotes from designers right here. So this is something that could be set up on one of those website audit calls is a page like this and this is a much better place to have your lead form that you originally had on the home page William um, you can have some a testimonial here um, the best ways to get bits for your events you can have lots of supportive text here um, and when the when you do the website audit call they'll make sure that all this verbiage is set up to um, turn more people into uh, conversions for filling out this form but um, for right now, William, I think that's that's the quick stuff we can do. You do have your top categories here. Uh, another thing you can do is instead of just having top categories here, let's do one more thing. Let's change the text there, and that's under Homepage Streaming Widget Options. I think it's the last one here, Top Categories, um, Search Vendors by Category. So it's a little bit search vendors by category just a little bit more for events makes makes the site a little bit more personable or relate more sorry to uh, events if we refresh this page search vendors by category now you know why these boxes are here they're the categories for the different types of vendors this stuff just makes more sense for the for the visitor um, I can make one more recommendation for you actually William if you don't mind Please. Uh, the pre-made color set, I would actually recommend. Um, we have one that's called the wedding theme color set. And it's just a little bit more lighter rather than being these heavy dark colors. Do you mind if we switch to the wedding theme? Please, go ahead. Okay. Got something in the back. Call, call in the background there. Yeah, excuse me. <laughs> so let's see what, what this does. Uh, Gabe, we can hear you there. So this kind of lightens everything up a little bit. Uh, you can customize it further, but 
uh, this is warm and fuzzy and you know most people are having wedding events or birthdays or baby showers and, and things like that this might be a little bit more uh, a better color set to at least start with uh, rather than the dark heavy one all right can I leave it at that William for you uh, more than you've done more than enough I appreciate everything thank you all you, right. Jason. Thank you, Patrick. All right. All right. Our pleasure. All right. Uh, actually, designing these sites is one of my one of my favorite things, and I, I could do them real quick, and I know Patrick can too. Um, you get them online, and then the fun part is when you can actually start your marketing uh, for these sites. All right, Linda. I've unmuted your microphone. Yes. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. How you doing today? Oh, okay. Good. Good. Is webinar doing doing okay for you today? Um, I'm struggling with uh, my my site. Uh, I'm just I just started uh, a few months ago, and I'm I'm having a problem with the categories. I I really don't understand how to set them up. The good news is Patrick is the category expert, and what I'll do is I'll pass it over to Patrick, and you can go ahead and ask your question to him. Okay. All right. Fantastic. So yeah, what is your question? Uh, well, my web, the website is Gold Key. And that's G O L D K E Y E. So, what is your question? And Jason's going to pull up your your site as we as we uh, listen listen to your question. Okay. Well, I'm I'm offering travel services, and the way I wanted to have it set up was to offer you know all these services, and I'm being told that I can't have that many services. So I don't quite understand how to how to do that, how to set it up. Gotcha. Let's see the sub-level categories, Jason. Okay. So uh, I'll just mention for everyone to start. To start, she's created two categories. One is travel buddies, and the other is travel services. Um, so you can you can actually have unlimited categories, and it looks like you have a sub-level category called house sitter which is connected to travel services so far right well there's um the services that i wanted was like accommodations and tours and guides uh -huh. and deals and products and dining and uh vehicles so uh -huh. would, those, would those be subcategories now, there's a, you've, you've mentioned some very interesting things here, and, and this comes up often. I'm really happy we get to talk about this. Oftentimes, when people are starting out, I hear category names that should really be their own sections on the website. So let's say I'm looking for a deal, as you said, correct? Uh -huh. If I'm looking for a deal, I shouldn't be looking for a member that is a deal. If I am a deal, if I want to, if I'm a, if I'm a business and I want to advertise a deal, I'm not going to create an account and say that the account is a deal. I, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to, in my dashboard, be able to add deals to my listing and to have a place on the website where people can browse deals from all of the different members. So it's really important to, to differentiate whether or not what you're looking for is a deal, is, is a category, or it should be a content type a section, a, a feature on your website. So vehicles may or may not be a, a category. Vehicles may be a feature type. You may want to use the properties feature and rebrand it for vehicles uh, and, and allow members to upload multiple vehicles. Because if I am a, if I am a, 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 I am a car rental agency, I'm going to want to upload 50 vehicles or maybe 15 vehicles to my listing. If it's just a category, then I can only create one listing. So the category is not the way to promote content like vehicles, classifieds, jobs, and coupons. That's done through the features themselves. Uh, so it's first important to differentiate between those two things. And once you've identified, okay, here's all the type of content I want on my website, the categories you need to make sure if you're doing, right now what we're discussing are member categories. So what is a member in your industry? A member is a travel agent, a member is a guide, a member could be a hotel. So those are the types of members that you have. So you need to make categories that describe those types of members. So a hotel could be your top level category. 
and the sublevel category can be uh, the the the, the um, not the accommodation the um, what was it called? <laughs> I forget the type of hotel, bed and breakfast. Yeah, type exactly. Or if they have a pool, amenities is the word I was looking for. So you can have a subcategory be amenities, and then the sub sub be all the different types of amenities. So people can search by amenities. So the categories have to be very specific to the type of member. But that but deals would not be a category itself because the hotel would add a deal through your deals feature. Okay, so something like uh, dining, um, I would have to list all the types of like restaurant food. Yeah, if you if you wanted to. Now this is always this is always the the pros and cons, right? So the yes, I see a lot of people who are starting out. They'll list 195 types of dining. Now you launch your website tomorrow, and I'm a user of your website, and I want to find a Chinese restaurant on the front end it looks great you have every type of dining that exists so I'll choose Chinese in my local town I'll hit search and I'm probably not going to have any search results so sometimes having too many categories can be detrimental to the website's reputation so having hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of categories that people can search search but don't have members in them is not helpful uh, necessarily for your business so what I recommend you do is if you want to have lots of categories like Jason is showing here it's a great example if you want to have all the different types of cuisine open that up to your members to select import them as categories but don't release it as a search filter don't allow the the new users of your website to search by sub-level category just let them search by top level category and when you have enough members to warrant opening up sublevel category filtering in your search, then you can go ahead and do that. But what's interesting is you're gonna start getting some feedback from your members of the type of dining restaurants that are listed. And maybe after three months, you'll remove all the ones that have no members in them and only keep the ones that actually produce results. And I, so that's it. So in a nutshell, what Pat's saying is, you might have many categories on your site, but until you get lots of members loaded into them, people are going to get a lot of zero results on the site. So instead of showing all these categories at once, um, cut that down a bit and only direct people to places where you know they'll get results for members. If this comes down to a bigger question of what came first, my website or my, or my members. Why should I launch a directory site if I don't have members? Why do members want to join my site if I don't have uh, any traffic to my site. So what Pat's explaining is this is a good medium of, of where, where to get started. And I wanted to ask you just a couple more uh, questions about your site. If you can, in one sentence, tell me who is the type, the website visitor that is going to be using your website to find uh, travel services through your website? Who, who is your, who's, who's going to be searching for stuff? Um, that's a hard question. I would. People, I'll start you off. People looking for for travel services, like if they're if they're looking for, say they're traveling to New York, or and they're looking for a hotel, they might be looking for maybe a tour, you know, to take in in New York. Mm -hmm. so, oh, I've heard a lot of tours and guides coming from you since we've been. On the call now there is no doubt there are sites like kayak Trivago TripAdvisor um, who who are mega who are mega sites that that specialize in all in finding hotels and things like that but that doesn't that doesn't mean there isn't room for someone to specialize in something else another right. another strategy that Patrick recommends is instead of trying to be all in one for travel you should hyper focus and be really good at one thing. Now, I would love to visit a site where I can get tour guides or, and I'm sure they already exist, but there's always room for finding tour guides or, or some kind of activity people can do in different locations while they're on vacation. And that might be lower hanging fruit um, to go after in your first year of launching this site. And maybe in year two, you can open it up to hotels or something that's a little bit more universal. Um, like dining and things like that. But if you change your site to to this, I'm not going to do anything, but 
gold key travel services. And if your slogan was instead of find all your travel needs in one places, that's a lot. That's a lot of content for you to add to your site. And you're probably, and I hate to say it, you're probably going to set yourself up for failure because what you're trying to do is just so big in, in the grander scheme of things. What you might want to do, and I've heard it a few times, is change the focus of your site and you just started to find tours and activities um, to make, you know, I'm just going to, to make your vacation, it's a pretty weak slogan, but you get the point, vacation awesome. And so let me make this white so it's easier to read. So find, just, find tours just, and, and activities. Go ahead. Uh, just focus on something like just tours, tours and guides rather than a lot of the other e services. Exactly. Now, I travel a lot, and I'd love to hire a, a guide for one night to kind of take me on a food tour around the city and things like that. So I know that you're definitely on to something with this. And if you and it's an easier sell. If you go to tour companies and say, hey, I have a website that is specifically geared to, for people to find your services, not hotels, not dining, you know, not car rentals, but just activities and tour guides, they're going to be able to say, hey, I want to be on that website because that website is specifically for tours and guides and activities. And you're going to have mm -hmm. a lot easier time selling your website to potential um, uh, professionals and services than if you're everything under the sun for travel. And to be honest, then, yeah, go ahead, Pat. Yeah, and, and, I, and I, I get excited when we talk about this too. Uh, basically, what I like to do and what I recommend you do is I try to do something that, that nobody's done. So for example, local is really big right now. So be, be, just admit what you're not right out of the gates and say, we're not, we're not your all-in-one website uh, for finding travel services, but we'll connect you to local guides. We are the place you go to find an independent guide to show you around town and not have the generic experiences that you do everywhere else. Finding a service that and nobody really offers out there is, is key uh, to promoting it. And, and again, you, I get very excited as well. Um, you even put in your title here, unlock the door to adventure. And car rentals is not adventure to me. I understand it gets you on the road and, and that's part. But adventure, and I think we came up with a tentative slogan for you, discover tours, guides, and travel adventures. I think we can gold key travel services. And actually, Pat's actually an ex expert in this field. He did for a brief moment operate um, a, a, tour, a tour guide or a, a travel uh, services uh, business in, in another life. Is, is that correct, Pat? That, that is correct for about seven years. Seven years. Um, so he knows a little bit about this. I'm just going to change your slogan here. Discover tours, guides, and travel adventures. Gold key travel services. Unlock. Unlock. How about your next adventure? Unlock the I love it. And, I love this site now. And, and, and to add to it, and I'm going to get a little general, and it's going to apply to everybody that's listening in the webinar. Um, and I hope people like this. Uh, this I, I might be uh, going off on a, on, a, on a little bit sideways here, but I think it's going to be helpful. When I had my travel agency, uh, I tried to launch it, and 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 if I was I, I was making a little bit of profits. Things are going okay, but I read uh, I read a book uh, called Delivering Happiness, which is another book I was thinking of, of recommending. And he made an analogy to poker that changed my life in business. And it's it's basically explaining Jason's lessons today in an easier to follow uh, uh, an easier to follow way. If you're a professional poker player and you go to Las Vegas and let's say you have five thousand dollars in chips to go play poker, the biggest and most important decision you make that's going to determine whether or not you have a good night or not is which table you sat out. You can be the world's greatest poker player, but if everyone else at the table has a million dollars in chip, you're not going to win, even if you're the best. If you go to a table where there's a couple drunk guys, a couple amateur people, and one person in your level, and everybody with the same chip count, you're setting yourself, you're setting yourself up for a much better chance at having a winning night in that poker, in that poker room. So when, you, when I applied that to my travel agency, I said, what am I offering? I'm offering hotels and tours and vehicles, just like we're talking right now. Who's my competitor? Expedia, Kayak, <laughs> Orbit, Hotels.com. How, 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 yeah. how many chips do they have at my poker table, and how many do I have? No wonder I'm struggling for seven years 
to really have a breakthrough. So then I, I learned the, the art of, of saying, okay, I'm gonna sit at a table where there's either no one else sitting or the other people sitting there have small stacks and we can be on equal ground and I'm gonna dominate that market. So all of my other directories that I've launched, and I've launched quite a few, they're all they're all in in locations that don't offer the services that I'm offering, or they're actually new uh, offers that th that there's nowhere else in the world that's offering what I'm offering, and that's why those are really taking off because there is no competition, and I'm answering a need that there is in the market, right? And that that makes it a much easier climb to success. So I, I hope I, <laughs> I didn't go too off there, but but I hope that's helpful. But when I really understood that lesson, it helped me identify what is a good business model to pursue, and ever since I've done that, things have been going much better. No, that that's very good advice, and I have one more question. Do, do you think I do you think I need that search box on the main page? What I think you need, um, actually, you you should have a search box now because if you're going to focus, and I know we just changed the whole concept of your idea, you can you can decide what you want to do. But now that you're doing tours, guides, and travel adventures, your categories become very simple. You can you can now have different categories for different activities, and it's and it's very finite. There's probably maybe 20 or 40 different things people can do on a travel uh, tour or adventure. So all you need is uh, top level categories of the different types types of activities, and and then the next thing you need is a location input, so people can enter where they where they're looking for the service, uh, where they are going, basically. That way, they can search for uh, zip lining in Costa Rica, or a, or a specific city in Costa Rica, and then they'll get results. And that's going to make your job a lot easier because as you add categories, you can look for businesses that offer those services in, in certain areas. And your job is going to be a, a whole heck of a lot easier, um, again, starting with tours, guides, and travel adventures. In year two or three, you can find an integration for car rentals and hotels after you've already um, cr created some traction focusing on guides and travel adventures. And, and if you don't want to go into the extreme, and, and if you don't want to go into the extreme adventure, because I understand it's really going on the side here, you could also be an adventure website for families or an adventure website for seniors, or an adventure website for retirees, where you're getting into a more and more niche market. Right. Where you're saying you're a senior and you want adventure travel, well, we build custom packages for you, and we recommend ad ad adventures that are suitable for your particular needs and there's nobody else out there offering this. So the more you can define a niche and people, the, the, the target market that you're going after can identify like a family and I have young kids and wow, a site specific for family adventures, then the likelihood of me staying on that website or wanting to digest the resources and content go through the roof. So that is maybe the biggest decision you have to make in business is defining this and that strategy will have the biggest impact on whether or not it's a successful business model or one that struggles. All right. Great advice. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your for your question. And then again, if if uh, if you're still having trouble, again, these are the types of things that we can chat about in that in that website audit call uh, with Patrick. If you're still feeling a little bit of stuck, let me just put a link here in the chat uh, for everyone. But thank you very much for that for that good question there. All right. How are we doing on time here? Okay, this was going to be also the two-hour event, so we still got plenty of time uh, for questions. And I like this. Instead of just asking how-to questions, we can also ask questions on how to improve uh, your website. And John, I've uh, unmuted your microphone. John. Yeah, I just it's been it's been a really helpful helpful um, demo today. Thank you very much. Sure. Um, I, I, I was wondering. I actually, I had two quick ones, but the, the more important one, the pressing one right now. Um, is there a way that we, that, that we can geotarget banner ads? Because well, I, I, I do. Um, we I do hear you. Uh, hear you. directories in a couple states. Go ahead. So there is no native feature to geocode target ads, and let me explain uh, to everyone what you're okay. asking about. Let me go to our demo site. So if you do a search for plumbers in Arizona, um, you know we talked about banner ads before, but they were just showing on every single page. Right. Um, there isn't a native way to to do banner ads, but you're probably only going to get a few advertisers for right now that are in certain locations, correct? 
Well, I, 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 I'll give you my, my sites. It's doctor. It's D R M E D M A R Dr. Medmar dot com. Okay. And we, uh, I've got, I've got a, I've got a directory, li directory listings of all the medical marijuana prescribers in New York, uh, New Jersey, Florida, and Maryland. Okay. So I, you know, I, I'd like, there you go. I'd like to, um, I'd like to be able to uh, have ads show up, you know, state by state. So, so, like, so what you can do, um, it's a little bit of a manual process right now. By the way, that's another thing on our feature request list. It's a little down on the list, but it's it's still there. Being able to target ads both by category and by location. Mm -hmm. um, what I would recommend doing, and I know that they've they've done this, and this would be a customization, but it's a very straightforward one. Uh, in this case, I would recommend going to our marketplace. Mm -hmm. I'll put a link here in the chat. And okay, thanks. What, what they'll do is they'll create a custom widget for you. And okay. basically the widget will say, like, if New York, show this ad. If Florida, show this ad. Or you can even go by zip code. Um, and then they'll okay. they'll have that widget on the sidebar. And then it'll that those if-then statements will do all the magic for you. Okay. Uh, no. Where would I uh, get that customization? So I, I put a I put a link in the chat of the go to webinar chat. So what you want to do is go to marketplace.brillientdirectories.com. Okay. And basically, you want to show if then statements to show your banners or any text. You know, it might not be a banner; it could just be supportive text uh, for a location. That should be uh, pretty straightforward for any of the developers here in the. Uh, uh, marketplace. Okay. Not complicated at all. Cool. All right. That's really good. Thank you. Yeah, I know. I know how valuable that'll be. And once we create an interface for that in the admin, it's just going to give again more revenue opportunities because now you can sell, you know, targeted ad space to to different advertisers. Right. Right. Because yeah, the, and. and yeah, that, that, that's perfect. What I like to do with those types of customizations when you're starting out, the geo-targeted uh, banners, for example, and you're like, well, I don't know if I want to invest necessarily on getting this done right away. Um, you can always go to make your first banner sale, the first ad advertisement sale, get a proof of concept that it's a good product to sell to your potential members. Tell that person it's geo-targeted, meaning tell that person anybody in their area are going to see their banner because everybody on the website is going to see their banner. Test the concept, test the pitch. Uh, get figure out the the sweet the sweet uh, spot in terms of pricing, and then with the money you've generated, just reinvest it in be able to expand that service and start geo coding those banners. Uh, what Jason just said, not waiting for all the functionality to be there to start selling and start selling today and start generating money today is a faster path to success than waiting for all the bells and whistles to be there. So I would I would definitely take that approach in the, in this instance and and try to sell the first banner. Get out there. Get on the get on the phone. Understand the scripts. Understand the rebuttals, uh, and and get good at that uh, instead of waiting for all this functionality to be there that you're looking to implement. It just distracts you from from being able to generate money. I like that. I like that, Pat. So yeah, generate some money first, and then reinvest that into a customization once you have somewhat of a proof of concept, rather than just experimenting with your investments. So really, really, really good suggestion there, Pat. Like I have a lot of people that say I want to have featured member geocoded on the homepage, and, and I'm doing a consulting call, and there should I invest in that? And I ask, have you sold one yet? Have you tried to sell one yet? Have you? Do you sold have a one? sales package <laughs> together? Do you have anything to present right now? If I want to buy one, what can you tell me? What's included? What are the benefits? And none of that is figured out yet. They're focused on the technology side of things, uh, and that is not what they should be focused on. If they're focused on the pitch the sales package that they get, what they email the customer, what they say in terms of a script on the phone, what additional benefits they get. If they if they focus on that, they'll feel confident to actually pick up the phone and actually make that pitch to a member and try to sell them on that. And I guarantee you, when you sell that first featured member on your homepage and they gave you $200 or $400 or however much the amount is, you say, oh my goodness, I'm so pumped. I'm going to take that $200 that I just made, I'm going to reinvest it to geocode it by members. But at least I know I'm investing in the right places. Um, and then people get really excited to know you're right, you're right. 
I should be focused on the sales side of my business. This is a business after all. And if I can make a couple of sales, the motivation is going to be through the roof to keep this thing going. Very true. Very, very, very true. I think that's a good theme. You know, every webinar ends up having a theme. Either we talk about categories or we get deep in the code. This one has been a lot about, you know, the presentation of your site and how to get it out to the um, get it out to the world quicker rather than focusing on all the little technical things and the functionality of your site. So I really like the topics that we've covered in this uh, webinar so far. All right, we're going to keep the party going. I'm trying to unmute you, Charlie, but your microphone. Oh, Charlie, I've unmuted your mic. Are you with us there? Hi, can you hear us? We can hear you. Who are you there with, Charlie? Uh, it's myself and Cecilia. All right. Hi there. Hey, Cecilia. Welcome to the webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Good thing we got all the uh, technical difficulties out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your question for us today? The search. So... <clears throat> We, uh, we have, I guess, a couple questions. Um, what was the first one? Go ahead and talk. Yeah, so the first one is the search functionality. If you go to our uh, website, our directory, sorry. What is so it? So it's directory for contractors dot org. Wait a minute. You, you guys have been with Brilliant Directories for quite some time now, correct? Yes. Yes, we have. <laughs> you you guys are, are probably one of the originals from back in 2010, 2011. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm really, really, I feel honored that you guys are, are on this call and also with still with Brilliant Directories. That's awesome. Thank you. So go ahead and, and let us know about your question. We'll see. Hopefully we can get uh, some answers for you. Okay. So the first thing is on, on this uh, form. On the lead form. Yeah, on the lead form. Do you think that this is a good format for us? We're kind of struggling with this a bit. And even though we've been with Brilliant for quite a while, we have not launched the site until now. So we are definitely struggling with okay. how this page should look in the lead form. So if you can give us your input. Sure. As I recall, you guys had like another aspect of your business, right? That you worked with the contractors? Yes, we do classes and we do safety right. and risk management. Okay, great, great. So now you're trying to get into the to the directory a little bit more. So, um, yes. so let's talk about contractors first. There's a lot of websites out there. Angie's List, Home Advisor, um, Advisor. Thumb, Thumbtack. You know, Thumbtack was an up and coming site and now it's a major player. These are all sites where people go to get quotes for contractors, plumbers. You know, contractors and individual um, home and business repair. Um, things mm -hmm. so um, contractors actually you know they're they're a little bit more they're not just plumbers for example contractors do a lot more than than just like one task right a contractor could do your roofing and your plumbing and and then they would hire subcontractors under them and, and things like Correct. that um, mm -hmm. so what we want to do when we're creating a, a basically a lead gen site, um, let me get let me go back to this moving quotes site. Um, directory for contractors. What I would like to do first is make a nice larger title for you that kind okay. of tells the user a little bit more about what they should do with the form below, and then we will uh, we can talk about the form itself let me just get let me just get the code to center this and a lot of people create you know sites for to find contractors but also in specific regions and things like that uh, let me just center this and then we'll come up with the text and then we'll look at the form itself mm -hmm. yeah one mm -hmm. of the considerations that we had with the form <clears throat> was that we took the labels off of the actual form because the the information requested is basically it's in the field you know grayed out in the field itself yes um, it also saves and a lot that of form space. looks very compressed right um, it does it does well it does save a lot of space I would recommend a few things for you is before you put name and email I would put information about 
what they need first. So you get them to talk about what they need and then underneath that is where they put their name and email and phone number. Because I'll show you on this moving site, you know, it's the first question is where are you moving from? Uh, you know, it's not, you know, what's your name and email address. So you get them talking about their project a little bit more. Um, so, for, okay. so first let's, let's uh, get free. Are they getting free quotes from contractors? Is that what they're getting? Yes, correct. Free quotes. And then for contractors, you want someone who's qualified, right? Right. Because qualified, local. Um, okay. So let's say uh, get free quotes from qualified local contractors. And then we'll, we'll see if we want to keep the the now let me just save the changes here another problem I'm seeing is you see mm -hmm. that your photo that you're using is a rectangular in nature uh -huh. right uh, mo when people are using the lead form um, it actually normally the you'd stop like right around here but because you're using the lead form it is actually more of a square image um, mm -hmm. that's being utilized here. So I'm not going to do it for you now, but I would recommend using a larger square image uh, in, because it's stretching the, uh, it's pixelating and stretching this rectangle um, to fit the space. Um, right. Okay. So let me just save the changes here. <clears throat> I do like that you're using a nice uh, smiley face there. Um, let me increase the size of this. Let's see what's going to be a good size here. Okay, it looks like a 34 would be a good size. And then this is part of the form. I think we can get rid of this part here. Uh, let me just see real quick. So we were going to do what size? 34. And that is over here, subtitle size. And then I'm going to go to your form with you. So we're going to go to the form manager. And uh -huh. it's the get matched form. And, you know, instead of like find a local contractor, I would say tell us about your project, even if we, if we were going to keep something here. So why don't we... Why don't we do that, actually? Yeah. I think that's coming from, from here. I'm just going to put this here. Tell us about your project. And let me see. Let me save that. Let me make sure I'm editing the right thing first. Yep. And let's make it nice for you as well. We're going to make an H2, and we'll put this. Okay, so now um, let's move the name and email and that stuff below the other stuff. So we'll, okay. we'll put that, uh, let's see, right under the message. Oh, you have time frame as well. That's a good one. <laughs> So I'm just going to move a few of these down. So this is the form. If, if people are watching, this is the form people fill out, the lead form. You have different types of forms on your site, but it's super easy to drag and drop certain things up and down. So we're going to put the phone number. And the last one was the location. I think location is, is a good one to keep up there. You know, where are you located? So let's keep that one at the top actually. And let me just save the changes and see how it's looking now. Okay. So let me make this text white since it's uh, supposed to be white. And then, and then I'm going to leave it at that and I'm just going to explain some of the like the psychology behind what to do with these forms. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. I think a little smaller here would be good. Oh. OK. 
Okay. Let me just copy this. And I'm going to create one more field. So this is where they tell us about your project. And then the next one is uh, how can we reach? I'm going to put how can we reach you? And they're going to put name, email, and phone number. Um, so let's do that also. I'm going to create a new field. It's going to be custom HTML. I'll just call it um, lead reach. And I'm going to say, how can we reach you? And I'm going to put it right above the first name. And we'll save the changes. And let's refresh this. Um, what I would recommend is this time frame. You have it as a radio buttons. I would just make uh -huh. it a checkbox. Um, I would just make it a, a checkbox because um, it'll it'll save some space in the form as well. It's taking up a lot like this. Do right. you, you guys okay with that? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Can you help us do that? Yeah. So that one's pretty easy. Um, you have the budget and then you have time frame. You have it as a radio select I'm going to change that to a drop down select. And you have it okay. nicely, zero to three, three ones. And maybe we can move that up a little bit under budget. Sure, yeah. And instead of time frame, um, oh, well, now that it's a drop down, so we say, um, when, when are you starting? So, and then they would, so instead of just time, time frame, you know, I know what it means, but now mm -hmm. it's a little more specific and okay let's look at this form now and I just want to do one more thing for you there we go just want to update the font size here and then we'll go and talk about the psychology of why these these are set up like this now and then I want to recommend one more thing for you and for everyone about if you guys, sometimes these forms work better when they're in steps. Like step one is you put your project information. This doesn't want to say for some reason. That was exactly what I was going to recommend. Um, the People are hesitant to fill out a long form because it seems like a process. Like I need to give them usually the phone number. Um, and details of the job and things like that is on a second step of a form because people are more inclined to start the process and give you their email address. Yeah, at the very least capture their, their email address and if for any reason they don't finish the second step of a form, uh, then you still have that, that, that content and you could reach out to them at a later time and, and nurture that uh, potential lead that came to the site. Okay. So, so what I'll do is I'll just leave it, leave it at mm -hmm. this for right now. And I'll show you. It actually looks a lot better. It looks a lot better. And although it would be better to have it in <laughs> steps, separating them with titles works just as well also. Um, so in this, play, in this case, they're telling you about the project. They're excited here. And then over here, how can we reach you? It's still super nice and friendly. It is a yeah. long <laughs> form, but it is separated um, into different steps. It's, by, it's chewing the elephant and... Not in one bite, right? <laughs> exactly. If you really wanted to make it a little more simple, you could put the number one here, like number one, and then get rid of the center, and, and then you can uh, you know, tell us about your project. And then number two is how we can help you. And again, the psychology of these forms is you just want to try to make it easier um, for, for the person. There we go. For the person who's filling it out. And seeing one two and then you know three submit my, and then you can change the submit to something else so i'm going to leave it like this for you guys but hopefully everyone can learn a little bit about how to make their lead forms um a little easier for the for the user to want to digest okay 
All right. Good luck, guys. Hope to see you in the next webinar. We can kind of review where you took this form and what you've done with it. All right. All right. All right, guys. Well, nice to hear from you and, and glad to see that you guys are, are starting to work on your site. Thanks for joining us. All right, guys. I think that'll 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 end it for us today. I'll just do a little bit of recap with you. The deal of the week. If you're not a VIP add-ons club member, today is the best time because the price has already gone up and this will be uh, basically the best price our webinar attendees can get it for. Um, and you'll also get any future add-ons that we're launching uh, soon. The recommended reading was good to great. Uh, this was actually comes from Patrick's recommendation and it'll kind of get you in touch with the reality of your company and your idea and how to take your idea and even if you need to pivot your idea so that you're always making progress with your business. Uh, we announced some new releases, the deep keyword search, uh, the linkable website address fields. Everyone is excited for the new transactions history page. And for you, Lisa, we really hope to get that uh, coupon codes working on the upgrade pages as well as uh, the geocoding for banner ads. Anything related to you guys generating more revenue is stuff that we want to focus on. So thank you very much for your questions today. It was a two-hour event today. Lastly, if you're not part of our LinkedIn group, you can go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash LinkedIn and we can continue the conversation there. So hope to catch you guys in two weeks. Two weeks is the next webinar Wednesday, not next week, but in two weeks. And we'll catch you in the next webinar and hope to have just as many awesome questions that time as well. So have a great week, guys.